everyone, this is Shelby and Beatrice from the Group Services Department at Geneva Centre. We hope you're all staying safe and healthy. We miss you so much. Welcome to our kitchen. So today we thought that we would give you some ideas of how to keep the kids engaged at home. Um, we're doing some activities that we do in the centre and they're pretty popular, very sensory based. So first we're going to start off with some sensory bags. Definitely the biggest hit at the centre. Then we're going to go into DIY lava lamps. And then we're going to do a couple of variations on slime and goo. Um, it should be pretty fun, so let's get into it. Enjoy! Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make sensory bags. Sensory bags are definitely our most popular craft at the center. Um, they're awesome because you can really customize what goes in them, you can customize how they look and really how they feel. Um, so another really good thing about sensory bags is that you get the consistency of gels and oils and slime, but you don't have to get your hands dirty, which is always a win for me. <laughs> so some of the things that I have today in the sensory bag are just things that we found here in the house. So we have oil, hair gel, um, we found some little pebbles in one of our drawers, and then glitter and food coloring. Um, I'm gonna give everyone a warning that glitter can be kind of a dangerous craft. Once it gets somewhere, it has a tendency to stay there. So you might want to just be careful with the glitter, maybe putting down a tablecloth or a garbage bag just to keep everything kind of neat. Obviously, you don't have to use these things in your sensory bag. In the center, some of our favorite ingredients are shaving cream, um, shampoo, we use little beads or buttons. Um, essentially, anything you have can go in a sensory bag. So, let's get into it. Okay, so the first and most important step in making a sensory bag is getting the bag. Um, a clear bag is preferable because then you can see all the cool stuff in it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, just any Ziploc bag is fine. And then some tape so you can actually tape over the edges so that nothing leaks. So today, I'm going to start out, it, there's not really a, kind of a right way to make sensory bags, but I'm going to start out by adding some of these. I like these because they're clear and they're a little sparkly, so it's like glitter without all the mess. But I'm also going to add glitter. <laughs> oh, white. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to add some of the oil. We just had this lying around the house, um, and it's not super expensive. We wouldn't want you to waste all your fancy olive oil. Okay, the next step, I'm going to add some gel. Um, this is a good addition because it's a little firmer than the oil, so it adds kind of like a gooey consistency. You can put as much as you want in. It's also nice because it adds some color. Okay, that's all I want for my bag today. So I'm gonna seal it up. You wanna try to get the air out of it just so that you can actually squeeze it without it popping. Great. The next part, I'm gonna tape the bag. So I like to fold it up a bit just to really prevent it from leaking. Okay. So the next part is I'm just gonna tape over it. It doesn't really matter how you do it. I just don't want any of it to spill. And there you have it. You can put as much as you want in or as little as you want. You can add really anything you have around the house um, and it feels pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna make some oobleck. This one's really basic, really similar to the sensory bag activity. It's just kind of make of it what you'd like. It's probably stuff that you'd have lying around. It's just cornstarch and water. I also have some food coloring and glitter here as well if you want to get fancy with it, but it's definitely not necessary. Okay, so we're going to start by just adding some cornstarch in. Really any measurement works. Um, and then we just add the amount of water that you need to feel um, like it's a good consistency. So I'm going to start there. True to form, I'm going to make it a real sensory activity and just mix it with my hands. It's nice and gooey, but even right away, you can feel that it goes from kind of a clumpy consistency to a gluey consistency and then just drips right off. It's really cool to play with. It's kind of mesmerizing. It's a fun activity and you can also put it in a Ziploc bag if you don't really like touching it or don't want to get your hands messy. And that is it. add some food coloring and glitter just to make things interesting. I'm gonna go with blue, just a drop or two, and then some red. Um, careful, you might have messy hands at the end of it, but I think it's worth the struggle. It's 
hard to capture on film just how satisfying it is to play with this, but take our word for it. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some goo and slime variations. Um, we tried to come up with some activities of some ingredients that you might have already in the house. Also, all that are, are edible in case they do end up in someone's mouth. So we've got some chia seeds, some flax seeds, and then some also some tapioca pearls. All good options. Let's start with a chia seed kind of slime. Um, really, the, the reason behind this one, it kind of coagulates when it's left with water forming into kind of a cool gooey texture. So all we did was pour like a quarter cup of chia seeds into a bowl. We put some warm water there. We left it there to soak. Um, it could definitely soak for longer. Uh, the more time it gives it to soak, the more it kind of eats up that moisture. But as you can see, it's really slimy, really cool, feels really nice. Um, if you're kind of sensitive to gooey textures, you could definitely put this in a Ziploc or, or a glove or something like that and then still get the benefits of the slimy texture without having the gross hands. So that would be the chia seed slime. We also tried to create kind of like a tapioca sensor activity as well with the tapioca pearls. To be very honest, it didn't go exactly according to plan or according to what the internet said would happen. That being said, um, it did kind of come together into a really weird gooey texture, which is almost even more pleasing. Um, so we just boiled it for 15 minutes or so, kind of created um, a weird like glue slime. We took it off of the heat, left it in a bowl to cool. Now I'm just going to add some food coloring because uh, the color's not the most pleasing and it's a little bit burnt. As you can see, it's a really cool texture, cool color. It's kind of gluey, gooey. There's still the tapioca pearls inside. Again, it's completely all non-toxic and hopefully items that you have in the cupboard at home. Okay, the next activity we're going to do is homemade lava lamps. So we do this activity a lot in the center. It's pretty fun, almost entirely nest free, which is nice, um, and really up to the individual about what colors, what glitter you want, so very fun. Okay, all you really need is some sort of water bottle that's clear. We are gonna use a mason jar today because that's what we have, but any water bottle is fine. And then all you need is oil, water, and food coloring. So I'm just gonna start and you guys can just follow along. It's pretty easy. You just add water. Um, obviously, you're going to add more water if you have a bigger container, so you can kind of just do a rough estimate. And then I already put oil into the measuring cup, but you'll just add whatever oil you have in the house. And already it starts looking pretty cool. And then I'm going to add some blue glitter in. And a couple of drops of food coloring. Okay, and that's really it. So now, you want to screw the lid on. This is important, you want to screw it on really tight because this would be not something that you want spilling everywhere. But then once it's all uh, sealed up, you just give it a shake. And there you have it. You can see that the glitter stuck to the blob like a real lava lamp. Yeah. At the center, a fun um, kind of variation that we do on this craft is we'll put blue food coloring in and then we have some fish toys and we'll throw those in and it looks like an aquarium. So yeah, this is how you make an at-home lava lamp. Okay, that's all from us. I hope you guys try these activities out at home. Happy World Autism Awareness Day!